God's mercy. Number 645. There's a whiteness in God's mercy, like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. There is plenty for redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. For the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind. And the heart, the eternal, is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more faithful, we should rest upon God's word. And our lives would be thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue to see God's plan unfold, not only through Prophet Samuel, but Saul, and now King David. And we know that he didn't have a... Uh, he was a sinner, wasn't he? And in spite of that, at the end of our first reading with her today, that the Lord's mercy was with him. It's a good challenge. As we prepare to hear the word of God, let's ask forgiveness of our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. And you plead forgiveness for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, Mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the children of Israel out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years, seven years and six months in Hebron over Judah, and 33 years in Jerusalem over all Israel and Judah. Then the king and his men set out for Jerusalem against the Jebusites who inhabited the region. David was told, you cannot enter here. The blind and the lame will drive you away, which was their way of saying, David cannot enter here. 
But David did take the stronghold of Zion, which is the city of David. David grew steadily more powerful, for the Lord of hosts was with him. The word of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion, on a champion I have placed a crown. Over the people I have set a youth. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand upon the sea, his right hand upon the rivers. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to the light through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. As we continue during this week of the Samuel readings, we will see how even though David is unfaithful to God, uh, takes Bathsheba and murders her husband, the Lord is still with him. And we have pondered that for centuries, and it's good that we remember as we sang in our open song, there is a wideness in God's mercy. Now, I want to just say a word about the gospel today, the sin against the Holy Spirit. Every time this comes up, I always question myself and say, well, no, I better get, get some information and look up some good uh, interpretation of this. And of course, um, Christopher Regney, uh, website uh, has one of their priests reflecting on this and he quotes from the Catechism as well as from uh, Pope John Paul II. The offense against the Holy Spirit that stands out is the one that the Lord calls an unforgivable sin. There are no limits to the mercy of God. 
but anyone who deliberately refuses to accept his mercy rejects the forgiveness of sins and rejects the salvation offered by the Holy Spirit. Such hardness of heart can lead to a final impenitence and eternal loss. Pope John Paul explains that the unforgivable blasphemy consists in a refusal to accept the gift of God's salvation that is offered to us through the Holy Spirit. And the Catechism, as well as Pope John Paul uh, always quoted, it's a sin of stubbornness. It's a sin of stubbornness that rejects God's salvation. And other sins against the Holy Spirit are despair, presumption, obstinacy, resisting truth, and envy of another's spiritual warfare. But obstinacy is the big one. Resisting the Holy Spirit and being stubborn and persisting in the sin. And so we look to David, how God treated him as a beautiful example of how wide God's mercy is. Let's now stand and offer our petitions of faith for all our members of the church throughout the world, both clergy and laity, may our shared mission of evangelization lead to the strengthening of God's presence in our world, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations and people, may the Holy Spirit lead them in ways of truth, justice, and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those struggling with difficult family relationships, may the Holy Spirit guide them in reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all of us gathered here today, and we remember Gudrun Schmitz, may the Lord bless us and make us holy in his sight. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, look favorably on these prayers that we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. I meant to mention this at the prayers of the faithful, but early this morning, Pete Truax died. And uh, the funeral arrangements are still pending, but we pray for Pete and for all those who have died. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing to God, the Father Almighty. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. I want to use one of the prayers of Eucharistic prayers for reconciliation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, and the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation that Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, at whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, he reclined at supper. He himself took bread in his hands and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and the resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our bishop, all the bishops, your entire people that you have gained for yourself. And just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, the Apostles, St. Francis de Sales, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, 
where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus has taught us to turn to our Father, and so with confidence we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let's show each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, you should enter the prayer, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Let us pray. Pour upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread one in mind and heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now let us go to glorify the Lord by our lives.